we got John Cleese's London comments. Really strange, but again, I think I didn't mention this previously. I did mention it previously, but um, fleetingly, but he's made a response video, which I think I'm going to talk about a bit more here. A very strange um, incident happened with John Cleese. I, I think, again, maybe because I've missed out on a few of these things. I'm a big fan of John Cleese. Of course, everyone's a big fan of Forty Towers. But I guess maybe because I've not been that aware of what he said in the past, um, post him being, you know... A, a performing actor or whatever maybe he's kind of gone into being a grumpy old man territory it seems that people online so maybe because i'm not aware of everything he says i didn't really take this comment um that hard i didn't really think it was that big of a deal but a few weeks ago he got in he got embroiled in a bit of a public a bit of a social media storm which again um kind of fizzled away after a while as those things you naturally do but at the time john this as his headline says in the guardian uh, john cleese was critic um, criticized for saying london no longer is an, Eng an english city right he made his tweet himself on his own account and then kind of people went crazy so the report says the following the 40 towers actor john cleese has been criticized for repeating his 2011 claim that London has no longer an English city, Cleese 79 tweeted that his friends abroad agreed with his observations, including concluding, so there must be some truth to it. So sorry, he's, he's basically, let me just read his tweet. John Cleese tweeted on May 29th the following. Some years ago, I opinioned that London had, was not really an English city anymore. Since then, virtually all my friends from abroad have confirmed my observation. So there must be some truth to, to it. Um, I note that London was the UK was the UK city that voted most strongly to remain in Europe too, which obviously come, goes bears what he's saying. So this comment I didn't think was that big of a deal at the time. I thought it was quite a, an astute an astute observation i think anyone that's lived in london for a long period of time has seen it change from the amount of for from the even from the the from the foreigners that are coming in or the immigrants that are coming in there was a period of time when there was a lot of caribbean for, um, immigrants coming in a lot of in asian or indian pakistani immigrants coming in a lot of african uh, immigrants coming in then there was a lot of eastern european some central european immigrants coming in now you have a lot of people from italy france spain coming in little waves it comes in waves right you see the you know the overall um you recognize it a lot more in news agents. I think in shops and news agents, especially along high streets and stuff, you notice it because usually you notice it because of the stores that open up and the people that work in them because usually those are the jobs that are the most easiest to get. They're the lowest kind of level, um, what you call it. They require the, le the least amount of skill to kind of get those kind of jobs. So in those jobs, you kind of realize, okay, what how the area is changing. And again, it's not a slight. I think, you know, East Ham has changed for the time that I've lived in East London. And East, East Ham, for the most part, was a fairly asian neighborhood or for asian area and that's changed too um you can see a lot of eastern europeans have moved into that area too that's kind of kind of mixed things up a little bit it's just what it is isn't it um i guess with john cleese as well it, what made it more confusing was with me was because he was very adamant that if we if the uk voted to leave the U, eu that he would leave the uk right he wouldn't want to stay in a country that wouldn't want to be part of the european union and he's kind of followed through in it right he's one of the only people in the whole you know political um, societal conversation who when they say things actually follow through with it right a number of u.s celebrities when it was uh, looking like trump was going to win were threatening that they were going to leave the states and go to canada but no, not many of them did right one one sticks to mind is lena dunham she was saying she's going to move to canada but she didn't end up moving she's still in the u.s um you know so he's he said what he said he kind of he doesn't really seem like a racist to me he said um, a astute observation but of course the Twitter space went a bit crazy, called them racist and whatever it may be. Um, I think Sadiq Khan said these comments make John Cleese sound like he's a character. Bowser 40. Um, London, London, Londoners know that our diversity is our greatest strength and we are proudly the English capital and the European city and a global hub. Which again, he hasn't said nothing against it. Uh, Sadiq Khan's a bit of a virtue signaling anyway. Um, in general, he gets on my nerves a bit with some of the commentary. But again, didn't seem like anything of a big deal. But of course, people kept going on and on about it. And so much so that John Cleese then decided to come out and comment and actually uh, clear up some of these actual comments that he said. So I've got some of it on here now. Now, which i'll show you which i'll kind of play for you if you're listening via youtube and for you guys watching the YouTube video you'll be able to see it you ever been on the receiving end of any of this um pc police oh uh, yeah eight years ago i said that London wasn't, uh, uh, that's the funny thing right just stop it there he said this eight years ago then retweeted it again so he i'm assuming he got in trouble or he got in trouble on twitter for saying that eight years ago then he repeats and says that again now and he gets in more trouble even though he's tweeting about this from his location outside of the uk or he's on his way to going to his new place the place that he threatened to go to if we left the eu such a weird world we live in isn't it like really like oh my god which is immediately taken as a racist remark i mean i'm all in favor of people uh 
staying with their cultures. If they come to England, you know, they should bring their Caribbean culture with them or whatever. Of course they would. But they should also be interested in the in the culture of the country to which they come. It's an old-fashioned thing that it's what England do at the moment. I mean, if I was going to live in another country, the first thing I'd do is learn the language, and then I would find out a bit about the history and maybe a little bit about the literature. But what I see is the English... Which is very true, right? And you don't really... And again, that's something that happened that we see too often, I think, for anyone that is actually living in reality and has gone to a school and have seen people come in and try to assimilate into a new school and the struggles they have with languages, trying to fit in. It's very, 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 very difficult. So I can see the... I can understand or sympathize with um, immigrants that come to the country, especially some of my family who come and have a hard time adapting or assimilating. Especially if you've got a big enough community, I can see the, the allure of going into safety and not trying to assimilate and just kind of retreating back and just kind of sticking with your core group i can see it but i also see the dangers in it right because when i went to the states i clearly understood why trump was going on and on and on and about mexicans because in la right especially if when i went to la it was it's you no know, it's full of mexicans they're absolutely everywhere every single service job out there mexicans are doing which kind of got me thinking like why is this guy trying to demonize mexicans when they're the people that are literally holding up this entire economy of la right or holding up large swaths of the united states but then it also got me thinking then it, then i kind of figured out why especially if you're a xenophobe or you're a nationalist when i went into in and out burger and i went to go order a meal i said something off menu i think i, I asked a question that didn't pertain to just saying the number of the menu uh, which kind of you know if if you're if you don't know the language and someone tells you ask you something as outside of your general kind of script that you know in your head that's when you kind of get thrown off i know for me when i was trying to learn spanish and you and you learn spanish in your book a certain way so maybe you're waiting for that person to ask you hey what's your name how old are you but they ask you how old are you what's your name it suddenly throws you off right and it would happen with the same thing with this girl young young, young girl in and out burger one of the cashiers she must have been like you know probably under 21 and she was stunned she didn't know what to say she turned, suddenly turned around to one of her colleagues in the kitchen and he came back around around and started asking me oh how can i help you and immediately i realized wow this young girl does, doesn't know how to speak english so she's got this job in the united states she's probably been i don't know there for maybe a couple of years she's at that age where you probably should be able to learn language pretty quickly at that age right your mind is still quite and quite elastic you're able to kind of absorb new things and learn things quicker and go and she's not learned the language of course some of it has hands not to do with not simulating there's other reasons behind it but then i immediately understood why i put the connections why somebody like a trump could appeal to people in the middle of america who then see their bank account is on zero they then see all these people who don't look like them getting the jobs that they they think they want obviously that they don't want and then they can't speak english and all of a sudden they make you know one plus one equals a hundred so those kind of arguments i get again it's not something that i agree with or something that i understand but i kind of understand i kind of get where that weird warp thinking can come from and of course the only way to help that is to have an identity as a country have people kind of uh, uh, what you call it associate with their identity sort of like the american dream come over want to do their best to contribute right give back to what what's kind of given so much of them raise their children there wherever it may be and then kind of you know help to lift the economy and have and, uh, and make it a better place for other people to come into right it's a kind of a cyclical thing right it goes it goes in a circle in a cycle sorry um the united kingdom isn't usually like that it doesn't feel like that loads of it has to do with maybe the government especially the tory leadership you know they've kind of cut, cut off a lot of social aid a lot of um income support for lower income families housing is not really where it should be so a lot of people really stick to their communities they don't really kind of move around right they don't really assimilate or try and integrate a lot of the indigenous community a lot of the people here who co who call themselves english aren't necessarily the most welcoming of people in the world you only have to go to a pub outside of england or outside of manchester liverpool and london bristol and brighton maybe and you'll see the looks you'll get when you walk in and you're somebody that doesn't look like them so there are things that kind of contribute to the kind of weird kind of tension that exists in the uk but it also goes to show why people would vote for the EU, would vote to leave the eu especially if their argument is that they're going to somehow magically make money appear and re and kind of reduce jobs that are you know null and void right reopen factories that are never going to reopen i get i get how easily they can be led astray but i don't understand why the john cleese comment of london isn't exactly the most english city could be seen as anything but an observation right you go into central london it's not english you go into East London, it's not English. I think the only parts of England, I think, or London, I think that are super English are maybe the places where you probably shouldn't go, right? If you're not English, um, I don't know, parts of like Bermondsey, maybe. 
maybe Croydon to a certain extent, but probably not. Maybe places like Slough, Epping, Boreham Wood, Islington. Those places are the only places that are slightly, you know, you know, white, white. And those places aren't the most forgiving, you know, of people that aren't, you know, that don't look like people like, you know, you know what I mean. They're a bit weird, those places. So I, I didn't really see why it was such a big deal. Again, it just made me wonder, like, what people are actually listening to. Why are they getting outraged? Is it a sport? Is it a recreational activity? But anyway, what do I know? Let's 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 hear John Cleese's other comments. Culture just fading away because nobody bothers to uh, promote it. Everyone else's culture is more important now. They're all important. Yeah, it's all important. Or one big smorgasbord. For example, a culture that actually turns a blind eye or even tolerates female genital mutilation is not as good as a culture that doesn't. Um, that I'm not really sure I agree with. I think we overestimate. I think I think it's that imperialistic mindset right that which we all probably have maybe even as brits maybe instinctively as an english person this idea that you somehow went around the world and you saved everybody from their abhorrent you know barbarian ways and liberated them and gave them education gave them christianity you showed them a cricket ball and shit and even though you showed them cricket they could still fucking beat you at cricket which is always something that makes me laugh right um you go to India, Pakistan, introduce cricket, and they just, they, they, you know, somehow, even though you invented the game, they're better than you at it. It just makes me laugh no end. Do you remember there was a time and period of time in school when people used to tell you that English people invented football? It's like, I, I wouldn't try and fight that fight. That's not a hill I want to die on. Like, English people, like, we, we, no, we didn't, mate. We're, I think it's quite evident by the state of our, the state of our team and the lack of, you know, um, World Cups and European Cups we've won in the, you know, preceding, preceding years. But, that aside, I think it might be that kind of imperialistic mentality that makes you kind of overestimate what you're actually contributing and also makes you kind of over, um, to over egg how our culture compared to others. I think, of course, female, female, female genital mutilation um, on the paper, on, on the face of it or in any way, shape or form isn't something that I would agree with or condone in any way, shape or form. But cultures are cultures right they do things that other cultures don't do that are just weird like um, i don't know like um those cannibal tribes right that they have in parts of the amazon or like even that tribe what's that tribe on that island that kills foreigners um if they come and try and invade or make contact with them right because they've had some bad experiences in the past that's would you call them barbarians or would you call these people you know or would you call them vigilant for trying to look out for their immediate family that's what I would maybe consider them as to be. So there's the cultures have different ways of doing things. Some things are not some stuff. Some stuff is not stuff that we agree with. I'm not really a big fan of people trying to enforce their cultures into parts of the West, like Sharia law and stuff. I think that's just like a no. That's like a no go. That is never going to work. It's just like um, trying to mix water and water and oil. But I think for the most part, to say one culture is better than the other is a little bit short sighted. A little bit again, um, a little bit nationalistic, a little bit imperialistic, because you're kind of thinking, you know, what we know, we know how to rewrite the ills of the world. You know, you have to look at what America's done and look at the state of the Middle East. You know, with them trying to go and trying to enact um, and try to be the police officers of the world, and how much that's hurt them. The amount of soldiers have died, the corpses they've left in their wake. Um, it's not necessarily the best place to go, I reckon, in my opinion, personally. <laughs> Well, that will make people go, well, who are you to say? Well, it's a moral. So, so that's my opinion. Because there was some nice coverage accusing of racism. I like how you just like when you just when you just an older dude, you just stop caring. Look, it's an opinion. It's why I think it, it's not right. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just my opinion. If you don't like it, cool, disagree. But I'm not going to not say my opinion. That's what, that's what it is nowadays, right? What you might what you said there about. You know, some cultures are better than the others. I don't necessarily agree with it. It doesn't necessarily mean I, yeah, I think you should not talk anymore. It's just an opinion, isn't it? So culturalism, uh, that is, if you're of a particular race, is not much you can do about it. But as far as culture is concerned, you can choose exactly which culture or which cultures you like. So you have freedom to choose with culture, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about color. I mean, most of the trouble, most of the trouble in London at the moment is that the nice houses in the centre of London have been bought up by uh, um, 
Yeah, I this this is the pit that I really again I really make to check out the whole video. I'm not gonna talk about the whole thing, but because it's a bit long, but I recommend you check it out. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's called uh, John Cleese Philosophy, Spirituality, and Political Correctness, and it's uploaded by the wonderful channel known as Wearable Wisdom. Recommend you check that out. But his comment regarding the housing situation in London is really really true. You only have to speak to an Uber driver especially some of the uber drivers that drop me off around here in east london around stratford village around westfield and stuff when i get picked up around there sometimes after a night out i've spoken to many and many a driver who told me like you know they've kind of looked up at the sky at, at these new build flats and be like you know shaking their head and like oh what's up it's like yeah these places man look how nice they are look how clean they are they're amazing looking blah 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 but they're always empty and he says that like if you just look up look how all the windows are completely black right and it's like i don't know 7 p.m 8 p.m at night you know usually the time of day when people are back from work unwinding chilling doing their thing but no one's in these places he says that he, he comes back and forth around those areas all the time and he never any and, and he can count maybe on one hand you might people who's dropped off who actually live in those blocks of flats everyone kind of lives in and amongst them so what ends up happening is that those new built flats before they've even been built once their planning permission has been secured they've secured the contractor uh or the design firm that's going to put them actually going to put them together or whatever it may be they already got they've already been sold to the highest bidder whether they're um people from the Far East, whether it's people from the Middle East, whether it's people from Ukraine, Russia, whoever it may be, who kind of buy them mostly as an investment, um, sometimes as something to kind of pass on to their children, sometimes just as another kind of, you know, something to add to their overall portfolio. But in general, they don't buy them to live in them. They just kind of buy them and just leave them as they are and just keep paying the rent um, in the background, which, you know, if you've got that kind of money, why not? But then for the people in London who are struggling to secure any kind of housing, especially young parents or people trying to move up in the housing ladder or just people in general that are in council housing that are stuck in that weird little loop of council housing where you don't really have your, your in temporary accommodation because there's no other buildings being built or that when they are going to be built, they're being privatized and being sold to the highest bidder. It's a really annoying situation. And that, again, is a, is a, is a, it goes back to the sentiment he shared at the beginning. You know, London isn't, London isn't English anymore because if it was, there'd be some regulations in, in force that would prioritize um, people who are from the city or live there, right, or have moved there permanently. So the same thing happened with Berlin. Remember when Berlin scrapped or changed the rules regarding Airbnbs, right? Nowadays, if you go on Airbnb to try to book an apartment, there's not that many left, especially during peak seasons like now until maybe the end of August. There's not as there's not as many flats as there used to be in the past. Um, there used to be so many flats, and then they they they, they changed the regulations regarding it, regarding who can rent out the flats. Regarding, I think you had to be an actual homeowner, you had to be in your name, all that sort of stuff, and it kind of cold nearly half of the flats that were available. But again, that was to prioritize the market for people that actually lived there. So people, so foreign investors weren't coming in, uh, buying temporary leases on flats during the hot season, renting them out, cashing the profit, and then running away. Right, that will kind of fuck up the entire housing market. So the government kind of stepped in in order to kind of enact that change. But we don't really have that in the UK, unfortunately. The space as well is a bit messed up. The way we built areas up has been strange, which is, again, I've mentioned loads of times here, the issues I have with the Hackney licensing laws. Most of it has to do with the fact that, not to do with the Hackney, Hackney Council, it's more to do with the way they built up the, it's, a, it's the permission that they allowed most of the bars to open up in residential areas or in areas that are densely populated by other houses, right? Um, they were eager and happy to have all these hipsters come along and lease out these buildings that weren't in use or weren't or just collecting dust. But then once those bars and clubs started to become popular and it turned into a bit of a strip, which kind of led to noise pollution and, and maybe antisocial behavior all that, they got their knickers and twists and kind of suddenly pulled away the licenses. But it was their fault for giving these giving these licenses in areas that people are living. So it's a kind of twofold problem. So yeah, I, I'm not sure what the issue was with John Cleese. I, I, I'm sure he said other things in the past that have been a bit um, erroneous, whatever it may be called, or erroneous. But I think now this time isn't really the time to kind of um, string him up and say that he should be cancelled. He's an old man. He's kind of he's a he, he's a he's a self-proclaimed intellectual. He likes to be well read. Um, he likes to talk about social issues. He he mentioned even towards the end of the interview, he purposely likes to troll or to wind people up and say things that are a bit provocative because he knows at the end of the day it's going to be a storm in an espresso cup, not a storm in a teacup. But <laughs> it's going to fade after a while. So again, if you're those people out there who are getting um, recreationally outraged about junkies are saying, take a chill pill, take a death, deep breath. He's not really being that serious, and it isn't that serious really. At the end of the day, really. But hey, I'm sure they will not listen to me.